Thanks to Native for sponsoring this episode. There's no case too big, there's no case too small. When you need costumes, just call Ch -ch -ch Chip and Dale. Costume Evolution, Ch -ch Chip and Dale. Yeah, there's costumes. Get ready, guys, it's time for a Chip Monkey episode. Time to get Chip Funky. Ch -ch -ch chip and hold on one second. Look at these statistics. Like 70 plus percent of you are watching this without subscribing. It's so easy, just click the button, bro. Chip and Dale, those two wacky mischievous chipmunks have been up to their antics since 1943. Whoa. These are two ancient chipmunks. These are the two of the oldest chipmunks I know. <laughs> I don't even think the Pennsylvania groundhog is as old as these chipmunks. When was Puxatani Phil born? 1887. Well, I guess I was wrong. Puxatani Phil has outdated the chipmunks. <laughs> Chippendale first appeared in the 1943 Disney animated short featuring Pluto called Private Pluto, not Pluto's Privates. <laughs> Dead. I almost called it Pluto's Privates. And in my mind, I was thinking, it can't possibly be Pluto's Privates, right? <laughs> I love these chipmunks. And here's a fun fact. They're actually named after a famous British furniture maker. You've seen his mirrors and chairs and stuff. If you, you, you know of Chippendale. You just didn't know that you knew. Hashtag furniture facts. Are they brothers? Well, I'm gonna Google it, Kenny. Are Chip and Dale bro brothers? People have been asking this. Chip and Dale's creator, Bill Justice, has in fact confirmed in his autobiography, Justice for Disney, woo, what a snappy title, that Chip and Dale are in fact simply little brothers. How can they both be little brothers? That doesn't add up, sir. Little brothers to who? Is there an older chipmunk? <laughs> We're revisiting Chip and Dale because the last time I did a Chip and Dale, I, I went into some kind of bizarre fugue state where I could not tell the difference between Chip and Dale. I was calling them by the wrong names. And this is where I want to really solidify here. Let's get it down on paper because for me, this whole chocolate chip nose trick does not work. And let me explain why. Chocolate comes in different cocoa quantities. The darker it gets, the <laughs> but the milkier it gets, the milkier it becomes. So when you say to me the chip is the one, Kenny disagrees with me. He thinks that I am making this up, but no. Look at milk chocolate. Look at <laughs> oh, chocolate Dan. Kenny makes a good point. Maybe my ADD riddled brain goes a little bit too deep into the color of chocolate when trying to distinguish between Chip and Dale. But you know what? They're my bros. And now here's the trick that I use. Chip is an upstanding chip monk. Dale, wild card. Wild card! Yeah! What? Because one of them has separated teeth as to imply his shenaniganry, and the other one has centered teeth to imply that he is a centered and aligned chipmunk. He is true to the chipmunk name. Thanks to Native for sponsoring this episode. I'm honestly so tired of getting plastic deodorants with plastic lids and plastic protectors that all just end up tossed into a recycling bin to end up who knows where. Which is why I'm excited about today's sponsor, Native, who has rolled out a new plastic-free deodorant that is earth-friendly and 100% plastic-free! It uses the same formula as the regular deodorant, just with the added perk that your armpits aren't contributing to the plastic waste filling up the planet. These things are made with 90% post-consumer recycled paper, and Native is a proud partner of the 1% for the planet, committing 1% of plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. Plus, recyclable packaging and use save 37 grams of single-use plastic with every free plastic deodorant purchased. And it's not just the packaging, the ingredients are also well-considered and refined. Aluminum-free, paraben-free, vegan and cruelty-free with simple familiar ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. And let me tell you something, this texture's great. Not sticky, not gooey, it applies easy, smooth. And of course, we've gotta talk about the smells. Native has a great curation of awesome smells for their line of products with limited edition scents and even sensitive skin scents being released all the time. 
Native sent me all kinds of amazing smells. Eucalyptus and mint deodorant. Oh baby, I'm smelling good. Oh man, that smells really good. It smells really good. <laughs> Ooh, my armpits are gonna smell like a spa. And coconut and vanilla deodorant? Wow, heavenly. That smells really good actually too. Oh man, these smell good. Three plastic free deodorants would be $39, but if you use my link and code, Disney Dan, you'll get them for $26. That's over 33% off with my code. And you can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. The savings! The first appearance of the chipmunks came from the ice capades in the early 50s. The chipmunk trio, because don't forget, there's a third one. There's a lady chipmunk, guys. Clarice. That's some strange love triangle that I can't get behind. Brothers fighting over the same woman. Come on. Just speed date. I love the original chipmunk costumes. Let's break them down. They're simple bodysuits, all right? They're chipmunk bodysuits with really elaborately sculpted heads. The vision ports for the performers inside are these big white screens with pupils painted on them. And the pupils differentiate between the characters. You can see Chip is looking in, Dale is looking forward, Clarice is just looking away. <laughs> Like, I cannot be seen with these two. <laughs> Real strong energy there, Clarice. Real strong energy. Clarice has got a little hat and a little, like, a uh, little apron to imply that she is a lady, I guess, because only lady chipmunks can wear aprons. These are just big baggy costumes. They have a lot of loose fabric allowing the performer to crouch down, stand up, move all over the place, and kind of have a lot of mobility because they're wild chipmunks, right? They gotta be crazy. These costumes were upcycled into Disneyland when it first opened in 1955. You can see them in pictures all over the park. They were, they were there for the parades. They were there, all right? They were there. Chip and Dale mostly, but Clarice did make lots of appearances. And here's a costume character where you see some of the first accessorizing happening. We have Clarice, Chip and Dale wandering around the parks in top hats and fun new aprons. They have a lot of fun with these characters early on. And I love that. These costumes perfectly lend themselves to that. They're just big brown canvases. Throw whatever you want on them. Everything's gonna pop, everything's gonna look fun, everything's gonna look colorful. These are wacky chipmunks. Their first costumes differentiate between their noses. There's slight color differences. They're not just identical costumes. Because representing two different characters as the same costume would be really confusing, right? Disneyland in the 60s? When the Disney parks finally rolled out their first Chip and Dale looks, they were essentially identical costumes. Look at these things. They're identical. Side by side, there is not anything different between them. What? What? <laughs> it's just like wandering out two Donald costumes just being like, well, one of them's Daisy, guys. Guess. These aren't the only sins of this costume. I'm also weirdly confused about the collar. Now, a lot of costume characters have collars like this. Tucking the collar in, of course, prevents kids from looking up at the costume character as they hug them and seeing the sweaty five o'clock shadow of some underpaged teenager named Tim. The choice to leave these collars out is so weird. Stacked upon the fact that they didn't do anything to blend the colors of the chest plate of the costume with the collar. I mean, at least if you're gonna leave the color out, work with it, work with it. I really don't have a definitive answer. I've looked for a long time. Why did we leave the collars out? Hey guys, so we're putting together the episode and uh, the mystery of the fur collars unraveled itself. Thanks to one of my amazing editors, Juliana. She pointed out some very interesting textile facts that I now have to share with you. It wasn't until the late 50s that we figured out how to make a lightweight fabric that also mimicked fur. So for a while, we just had very, very heavy, very, very thick, very, very plush fur. And so these collars were made of this incredibly heavy, dense stuff. I'm talking like bathroom floor mats. So you can imagine just tucking that into your shirt. Uh, it would get really hot, really steamy, really gross, really fast. And luckily though, in the 60s, we finally got like, you know, like this, this polyester fur that was lightweight and fluffy and fun. But man, those were a few rough years of hot, rug, sweaty necks. 
As we rolled into the late 60s, early 70s, we were ramping up for huge expansions for Disney parks, specifically that big old thing going on in Florida. Lots of new characters were rolled out for the opening of the Magic Kingdom, and a new fresh look for Chip and Dale was prepped and ready for when those gates opened. I love this new design of Chip and Dale. Now, now they're separate, all right? They both have distinct looks. As I said before, Chip looks like a proper chipmunk gentleman. Look at him, he's got a nice little black nose, little cute little white tooth, some short little ears. He's handsome, he's handsome. And Dale is just chaos, right? His, even his teeth don't wanna to be together. That's how chaotic that man is, all right? He's got that big round milk chocolatey nose, see? I would definitely want to eat that over top of the dark chocolate. Although if I'm in a salty mood, a little bit of sea salt and dark chocolate. Oh, guys, I have a chocolate problem. All kinds of improved details came to the heads of these costume characters. First and foremost, we're getting a more rounded face. We're getting slightly bigger chip monkey cheeks, a slightly more rounded head. The eyes are getting bigger. A lot of the details like the eyebrows and the, and the lines of the face, everything's just getting a bit bolder, a bit more cartoony. It's a, it's a really great upgrade. And finally, the fur bib now is two-toned so that the middle of the fur bib lines up sometimes, kind of, with the center of the bodysuit. So at least that illusion is trying to happen. But here's where the 80s come in and we get the modern monks, baby. Then in 1989, we get Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Now we have the fully rounded out chipmunk heads. Everything becomes a little bit fuller, a little bit more rounded, a little bit cuter. Mm, just wanna cuddle up and squeeze these guys. And Mickey's Starland show included in 1990, a host of Disney afternoon characters, including the suave sophisticated look of Chip and Dale in the Rescue Ranger gear. Chip is wearing his um, Indiana Jones getup, right? Very much in line with how a chipmunk works, all right? Scavenging, crawling into weird holes, looking for weird things to possibly keep. That's the chipmunk life, also the Indiana Jones life. Here's where things get a little bit chaotic though with Dale. Dale just looks like he's here for good times and a cigarette. He has a Magnum PI energy. He gets that floral shirt. The modified head sculpts that they put out for this Rescue Ranger look is the modern chipmunk look that we have to this day. The double aughts were a weird time for costume characters. We were experimenting at length with articulation. And during the Christmas season of 2008, the chipmunks got chatty for Mickey's merriest Christmas celebration. And the celebration, Christmas, hot cocoa and cookie, Glutton fest. Just, you're just standing there just slurping liquid chocolate and pounding your face with gingerbread. And you're like, yeah, characters talk. We've been here for 14 hours. Are these characters talking or am I delirious? Nope, they're talking. Those are robot character heads. I call these the chatty chipmunks. Now some modifications to the look had to happen because now everything's articulated. We had to make the head a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier to account for all of the mechanics that are going on inside of the head. This means bigger, wider eyes. This means a bigger, wider mouth. And there are some angles of these costume characters where uh, they had to play with the pile of the fur. But otherwise, I think that articulation looks great on these characters. They look super fun. You think Barbie has a lot of outfits. Chip and Dale love an outfit. Some of my favorite Chip and Dale costumes have been, of course, Donald's Dino Bash. Those dinosaur costumes I'm obsessed with. But man, festivals, parties, parades, any reason to put this pair in a fancy dress, Disney takes. Because uh, let me tell you something, they look great. They're very simple costumes. They're easy to dress up. They're fun to dress up. They're fun to accessorize. And boy, do we accessorize them. Pages upon pages of Chippendale costumes, which of course have culminated in a recent update to the Rescue Ranger costume accessories because a Chippendale reboot is coming. Can't wait to see the movie. Will it be good? Maybe. Kenny says no, but Kenny doesn't like anything. So I mean, <laughs> So can you trust Kenny? 
I think it's gonna be great. I love the voice cast. I love the idea of this, like the 3D versus 2D. I really have high hopes that it's gonna have a lot of Roger Rabbit energy. Like the kind of like addressing animation, addressing the industry. I love that, I love that. So here's hoping. As you can see, Chip and Dale haven't had a ton of looks. There have been decade after decade that have been step-by-step -step refinements of an ultimate look that settled in about the 80s and 90s for these characters that have just been so classic and amazing. Let me know what Chip and Dale costume meet and greets you have had the chance to see over the years. Send me your pictures of Chip and Dale and all their funny costumes over on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon. Also find me on TikTok. Appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for watching all these character evolutions. What costume character should I look at next? Let me know. I need to know. Let me know what you guys want to see. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for ringing those bells. Thanks for subscribing. You're all amazing. You rock guys.